Okay, so uh, I wanted to um, document this this uh, correction. That's why I had to load it up. Okay, so carbonate. CO3. Okay. So make sure you um, change that on your practice test. Okay. Additionally, uh, I don't like dry, I don't like dry lab six very well. Uh, so we're going to do these instead. These hit exactly on what you need, balancing equations. The dry lab talks about balancing equations in a kind of a secondary way. Um, the way I'm going to show you is a very straightforward way uh, that I've been using for, for uh, almost two decades. Um, and these will, in fact, this is one of them here. Um, now, the answers are on there as well. So, uh, I don't want you to take this as a trivial exercise. It's a way to check your answers. So everyone should get 15 on this. If you don't get 15 on this one. <laughs> okay, so it's under Canvas Files, Unit 4, and there are, I have like six equation balancing ones, but just do the first three. And it'll give you plenty of practice. They're ne they're numbered one two three, yeah. No, not yet. Yeah. I mean, this is sort of part of the last sort of. Um, what you need a um, concept of a mole, and how many grams are in a mole per formula. That's what you need for that lab, which is going to cover on Friday. Okay, all right. So, don't do the dry lab in your packet. Do these three worksheets instead. Submit them as one PDF though, under the dry lab six uh, assignment. Okay, does that make sense? Um, if you wanna do the dry lab afterwards, dry lab six for extra credit, I'll give you extra credit for that. But do these first though. These are the ones you're getting points for. Well, you're getting points to do that other one too. But um, these are much more straightforward than that one. Okay, so let's talk about, let's talk about this now. Um, Okay, if a chemical reaction happens, I gave you in the past ways to tell a chemical reaction is happening as opposed to a physical change, like ice melting. That is not a chemical reaction, okay? So if there is a color change, Bubbles, heat or cold, solid forms, or if there, you can see a liquid form. In other words, a new layer may form. Now, if this doesn't happen, you could still have a chemical reaction. So these are chemical reaction visible, uh, 
manifestations of a reaction. Color change bubbles, gets hot or cold, solid forms. Now we're gonna do some labs coming up uh, on single replacement, double replacement reactions. Uh, we're, we're this particularly number four here is gonna happen. You'll see uh, two, two clear liquids, put them together and you'll see like a white solid form and stuff. So it's, it's uh, very real. Now, <laughs> when a reaction happens, What you start with is called reactants. What you create is called products. Products are always, no exceptions, always on the right. Reactants, reactants are always on the left, no exceptions. It's just the way the world does it. Now, things happen right here. For the reactants to become a product, we have to go from unstable to stable. And usually you can measure some kind of heat being given off. Now, unstable things go to stable things naturally in our universe. To go the other way, it requires energy using the form of heat. Not necessarily always heat, sometimes heat. Example, I talked about the fluorescent lights. We have an electron that's nice and stable. It doesn't want to go to another orbital that's less stable. That's why we have to put energy into that electron to get it there. Otherwise it won't go naturally. And then it wants to return to that more stable state. So reactants, now sometimes reactants are pretty stable to start with. So this reaction may not go or it may go very slowly. For example, I mentioned before about diamonds and charcoal. Charcoal is more stable than diamonds, but you don't see your diamond ring turning into charcoal in your lifetime. Remember the Marilyn Monroe diamonds are forever. <laughs> That's not quite true. <laughs> Who remembers that song? It's a really old song. Oh, surprise, no one's raising their hand. <laughs> she might have even made a movie actually that title. Okay, so um, the next step of this is we get into something called balancing a chemical equation. Now, chemical equation is on the left are the reactants. And I want you to think of the arrow as an equal sign. This is kind of a Ferguson thing. And these would be the products over here. Now, normally the way, unless you're a biochemist or an organic chemist, um, that's the first thing I tell my organic students is we're not balancing equations anymore. And I'll look, but we've always had a balanced equation. That's right, except with biochemistry or organic chemistry. They never balance it. Um, however, in our class and your next chemistry class, whether it's 1A, 2A, or 3A, you're going to be definitely balancing equations and assume any equation I give you is unbalanced. Assume it's unbalanced. Then you have to check, see if it's balanced or not. So in the sequel sign, that means that the FEs, the Hs, the S, and the Os have to be the same number on this side. Otherwise, we have something called an explosion. Don't want that. So... I have a process I use. So let's take, uh, let's do number two here. So we have C2H2O. 
Step one. Inventory. The inventory on the left, inventory on the right. So what I usually tell people is write down the elements that are on both sides. So we have we have C's, H's, and O's. And we have to count the C's on the left, count the C's on the right. And they should be equal if the equation's balanced. They'll be unequal if it's not balanced. Okay. So we've got two C's on the left, one C on the right. Does everyone see where I got the one C from? There's no subscript. Here there's a subscript. There's no subscript there, so we assume it's one. Okay? So you can write a one there if you'd like to be consistent. It's perfectly fine in my class. Okay, H's. We have six H's on the left, two H's on the right, two oxygens on the left, three oxygens on the right. So this is very unbalanced. So then the question is, is that how do we balance it? I'm running out of room. Next thing you have to do, you have to manipulate the coefficients. Yeah. Okay, this question was, why are there three oxygens on the right? Well, we have two here and one there. So, so you collect all of them on each side. All right, so what is a coefficient? There are two numbers in that chemical reaction. One is a number right here in front. What's that number there? One, remember, when there's no number, it's always one. So we have one, 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 one. Those are the only numbers we can change are the coefficients, not the subscripts. If we change the subscripts, we're changing the molecule. So after you change the coefficients, you do another inventory. And you keep in this circular process until the left and right numbers match. It's also okay if these numbers are doubled or tripled, as long as they match. So, and it sort of doesn't matter where you start. So, let's start with the carbon since that's the top uh, letter, okay? So what can I change coefficient wise to get the carbons equal? Add one more. We're not adding though, we're always multiplying. So we're gonna change the one to a two. Now we have to inventory again. So now that kicks the C up to a two. The H is still a two. However, the O's are no longer three. There are two times two is four plus one is five. Okay. We're not there yet. What do you want to change next? H or O's? Okay, let's do the H's. Okay, we got six on the left. Six on the right, inventory again, okay? So that's changed the H's. It's also changed the O's. We have four plus three is seven now. So this is the tricky part right now. How do we get this? to seven. Well, that'll give us 14. 
What do we multiply two by to get seven? Three and a half. Now this is where a lot of teachers differ from me. And that three and a half is seven over two. Okay, do inventory now, it kicks that up to seven. If seven over two times two is seven or three and a half times two is seven. Okay, now it's balanced. Why is it balanced? The numbers on the left equal the numbers on the right. We have a problem though, what's the problem? Who's done this before? Yeah. Right. Right, this is the issue here. We have to convert now that fractional coefficient to a integer. Okay, balanced equations tell you two things. A balanced equation tells you the number of molecules that will react and or the number of moles. And we haven't talked about moles yet, which is just a common unit in chemistry, physics, and engineering. So this says one molecule of ethane reacts with three and a half molecules of oxygen. Obviously you can't have part of a, part of a molecule to and three molecules of water are created. So we have a fix for that. We're gonna multiply everything by two. Remember, I said to treat this like an equation. So what we do to the left, we're gonna to have to do to the right. So what do we do to clear seven over two and not make it a fraction? Multiply everything by two, exactly. So two times one is two. That makes that seven or six. Now let's do inventory again and see what it looks like. Okay, we have four carbons, four carbons, 12 hydrogens, eight, excuse me, um, we have 12 hydrogens with the water and we have uh, 14 oxygens, and then six and eight is 14. So now it, it's balanced again, but without fractions. So some teachers will say, stop if you have a fraction. And, they, and they'll say, modify, blah, blah, blah. And fractions are fine, just don't stop there. Just fix them. And usually it's two, multiplying by two. Sometimes three, normally it's being multiplied by two. I would say 90% of the time is two, the rest of the time it's by three, never more than that. And in our class, it'll probably never be even three. It'll probably always be twos. Okay, so does this process make sense? First thing is inventory. And then if the inventory is not already balanced, sometimes equations are out of the chute, just balanced, just automatically balanced. Um, then we take inventory and see where we are. And then we modify coefficients to bring the inventories equal on left and right. And then we take inventory again. And we just keep this process till it's balanced. And then there's a, a step four here, and that is clear fractions if there are any. Okay, so does this process make sense? Okay, all you need to do is practice it a couple thousand times. And if you look on unit four files, you'll see a whole bunch of practice there, whole bunch of practice. And let me tell you, unit four is really an important unit. It's a most, unit one is important, but, um, but unit four particularly in your next chemistry class, that is very weak with when I teach 1A, that is very weak with students coming in, but don't take 
Chem A, really weak. So this is a really important unit. Now it's mathy, except for this. Well, this is sort of mathy, kind of grade school mathy, but it's mathy. So, all right. So let's do some more examples. Um, and that's probably out of out of ten, one to ten. This is probably a seven difficulty level. Now, if you look over here. Number nine is probably a 10, but I'm gonna show you an easy way to do number nine. Easier, I should say. <laughs> okay, and this is, um, I think this is the first worksheet number one. Uh, there's six of these on the practice. Um, okay, so let's do another one here. Let's do um, like number five. By the way, um, there's a practice a lot of textbooks and professors do that I don't do because I think it's confusing for students. Most people call that oxygen. I call it oxygen gas because oxygen doesn't exist by itself. It's extremely reactive, very unstable. So I always say oxygen gas. Dry Lab 6 calls that oxygen. Hydrogen, H2, okay? call it hydrogen. And it drives me crazy because it's not hydrogen, it's hydrogen two. Um, so whenever you see just oxygen by itself, that's what it is. He hydrogen by itself, that's what it would be H2, okay? And I don't know why they do that. To me, it's, especially in a beginning 1A class or a chem A class, I think it's crucial you call it oxygen gas. Okay, anyway, here. Um, I do have my soap boxes. Okay, so we have ammonia, NH3, plus oxygen gas yields nitrous oxide and water. Okay, we do the inventory. Okay, one in on the left, one on the right. Three, two, two, two. Okay, so the hydrogens are messed up. So we got three on the left, two on the right. If we put a two here, that kicks up to six. If we put a three here, that would kick that up to a six. So let's try that. And all we're doing is looking at the hydrogens now. So you just choose one of those. So we're gonna put that as a two and this a three. Have to do inventory again. Okay, we have now six, two, two, one, seven, two. Four, right. <laughs> See, I'm not even drinking Chardonnay. <laughs> Six plus one. Oh, hydrogen. Oh, geez. <sighs> well, the whole idea why we put a three to get it up to six. Oh. <laughs> and this is on, I'm recording this too. <laughs> okay, so we still have a problem with the um, nitrogens. Okay, we got two on the left, one on the right. So let's kick this up to a two. And you have to do re inventory again. And that makes that two. And it changes the oxygens. Okay, we got uh, three oxygen here, 
plus two is five oxygens. So it's just the oxygens now that are the problem. Now, when you're balancing equations, leave the simplest molecules last. Because when you change this coefficient here, it doesn't affect anything else. Just, it's just affecting the oxygen here. So what are we gonna do to get this up to five? What are we gonna multiply that O2 by to get five? Five halves. That's five halves times two is five. Then we have, and we have a fraction again. So what are we gonna do? Clear the fraction by multiplying everything by two. So that makes that a four, that a five, that a four, that a six. Okay, so now we have four nitrogens, four nitrogens, 12 hydrogens, 12 hydrogens, and then 10 oxygens and six and four is 10. So it's balanced now. I was teaching last summer at, at Sac City and I had some students from here taking 1A over there, which is called Chem 400. And they were in my summer lab, I wasn't lecturing. Over there, they split up the lecture and lab. They don't do that here. I like it better because then I can modify my lecture and make sure it agrees with the lab. Otherwise, it, you have to do a giant introduction at the beginning of the lab if you haven't covered a lecture. And that assumes you're aware of what the other person's lecturing on. So it's not good. Anyway, um, he was teaching balancing equations. He says, oh, let's just look at it. I think you need three. You have no process. Now there are two ways to balance equations. Okay, this is called guess and check. Doesn't that sound analytical? <laughs> At least the check part is there. Um, so we're kind of based on the inventory. See, the inventory gives you a starting place. Um, they usually do it at the very end rather than at the start. Uh, the other way is using linear algebra, which is the class you take after the third semester of calculus. And what you do is you sign, this is variables and you're using uh, uh, matrices. And it's a, it's a very easy process um, on your calculator. It's a real pain to do it by hand. And I had one class, it was about four or five years ago. This, this woman was writing down, she used a whole page on uh, to solve this one equation. And I looked at it and she was doing systems of equations by hand. She had the same, I was like <laughs> really impressed. I mean, literally, it took a whole page to balance this. So, okay, so um, why don't you, I'm going to give you some practice problems. What time is it? 12, 30. We have a lot of time. Any questions on this process? Okay, why don't you try some of these? You got to do these anyway. Don't do nine, though, yet. Um, like, why don't you try... Um, Oh, let's see. Um, try number 10. I know why the window was open. Huh? Oh, yeah. I wonder if they kill something.
muscle memory thing. And that's SE now too. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I can't just look at it and see if it's all right. Let's see here. Uh, one, seems one. Like a trick question. Huh? It just seemed like a trick question. Kind of easy, huh? Is that parentheses? No, I just actually was really oh, okay. a new space for the line. Okay, all right. Yeah, I was going to say, don't use parentheses. So, yeah, that's fine. Hmm. Just one thing to fix on that. What we have to do also. Yeah, I mean it's it's balanced, right? Sorry. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, did I do something? something in it? <laughs> well, I, I I chose some more challenging ones. <laughs> <laughs> Should have used that one first. <laughs> yeah. Um, go to uh, files, unit three, excuse me, unit four, <laughs> just finished. And all the ones here, he says, uh, the equation balancing. Oh, okay. Then so, yeah. the different pages. No, um, these are just different worksheets. Okay. And I guess they're all one page, and I have the answers too. Okay, and then that's on the second page. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Easy enough. And they're all the same format. Yeah. Okay. And some of you are wondering why this is seems weird because it's so easy. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, nine's a pain. However, I have a trick for you where it's not hard at all, believe it or not. Okay, so I'm going to give you, I'm going to show you this one trick and then um, we're done for today. You're, you have enough ammunition to do your, do your dry lab. Um, so there is a, this is very challenging problem. This is probably the hardest one on those three worksheets. But there's another way to balance equations. It's by grouping. So that's what we're going to do. So to group, you're going to be grouping by ions. And some ions, as you know, like, like phosphates, PO4, it's a group. It's a group. Okay, so we have a PO4 on the left and a PO4 on the right. We're not going to call it a PO4 anymore. We're going to call that X. Okay. NH4, that's ammonium ion. We have an NH4 here, NH4 here. That's going to be Y. We have an NO3, nitrate, nitrate. And then we have lead and lead. So instead of all those, we only have four to deal with, X, Y, Z, and lead. Now, there's oxygen here, oxygen here. We aren't counting oxygens, and we're not inventorying oxygens. We're inventorying X, Y, and Z in LEDs. And by the way, this is an optional technique. If you find this weird and don't like it, just go back to the first way I showed you. First way is very challenging, though. Okay, so we have X, Y, Z, just like before. Oh, and forget about lead. All right, so how many X's on the left? One. How many on the right? Four. 
Ys. Three, one. Zs, four, one. Leads, one, three. Okay, so X's, if we put a four here, Okay, that get, makes this 12. And we put a 12 over here. It makes the Y's 12 and 12. However, when we made a four on the left, that changed the number of X's to four. And Z's, we have four on the left. We have 12 on the right. So if we put a three here, that kicks the Z's up to 12. And we have 12 uh, Z's on the right. And we have three LEDs and three LEDs. All done. Now for this to work, this is crucial. It has to be on both sides. It can't be just on one side. It has to be on both sides. And if it is, take advantage of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's not any for us. Y, right? So it's 12 Ys. And then we have four times three is 12 on the left. See, the, the, y's, the Y's come in threes here. So when we put four out here, we have to say so we have four groups of three Y's. So four times three is 12. That's why I put 12 on the right. And 12 or? Yeah, 12 Y's, 12 Y's. I, you only have, on this worksheet, do this one last, <laughs> and, and these like this. Do them without grouping first. Uh, I wouldn't advise not grouping this guy. This guy is, is, is a real pain. It really is a pain. This one should be, <laughs> it's funny. It, I was going to say this should be number 10, but the easiest one is number 10. <laughs> um, Okay, so are there any questions about this grouping? Does it make sense? And take advantage of it. It really will save you some time and accuracy. And if you want to do it the old-fashioned way, first way I showed you, try it with this one. You'll see. Because, man, when you... <laughs> these are so complicated. Whenever you change this, it changes everything. And that's why this is a pain. But if you group it, it's not very hard at all. No, yes. well, easy for me to say, right? Okay, so that's what I wanted to cover today, how to balance equations. So, and again, I want to remind you, assume all equations are unbalanced. In fact, there's one on there that's ridiculously. One of the worksheets, um, I forgot which one. Let's see if it's this one. Now it's in two or three. It's written as balanced. A lot of people go, I, I, it, what's wrong with this? You know, it, it's just written as balanced. Some are very few come that way, but so don't don't assume after you do the inventory, your, your inventory is wrong. Everything balanced. I'm like you're concerned. <laughs> Fractions, your friend too. You just have to clear them. Yeah. You have a question? Um, yeah. Uh, for the graph, do you have to like, like, do our work on a separate piece of paper and then you submit that or do you want to submit the graph? You can print it off. 
you want in Rhino. I have the, the answers are all in those because all my worksheets have answers. But I'd rather give you the answers and have a clearer worksheet than that dry lab. And just remember, this is a prep class. The purpose of this class is to prepare you for your next chemistry class. So if you just turn in the answers, <laughs> you'll get full credit, <laughs> but it's not going to help you for your next class. So. And we're going to be balancing equations from now to the end of the semester. Unit five involves balancing equations as well. Not as much as this one. This one really focuses on it. And the culminating event is called stoichiometry for unit four. And what stoichiometry is, there are four steps to stoichiometry. Guess what step number one is? Balance the equation, right? Step number one is balance the equation. And then we're going to be doing a uh, what's given. <laughs> what are you trying to calculate? <laughs> This sound familiar? Then you'll be doing setup, just like we did in unit one. Only we're involving an extra step in there. That's step number one, the balancing equations. Okay. So that's it for today. When I walked in here, there were like, what, six of you here or something like that, or five? I thought everyone got confused about lecture today. And I was trying to be... Um, I was trying to be sensitive to what's happening tomorrow. I mean, uh, what's happening uh, uh, Sunday, it's Easter coming. Some of you have, depending on what you're doing in your life, you have activities you do, participate in that. And I just don't want to have the class, when you could do this dry lab at home just as easily, you can do it, do it at home. That, you can free up as much time as possible. Oh, uh, is it one through three? Yeah. Okay. Also, it the lab can do tomorrow, or is that no last week? No, you sound like a hydrate lab. Yeah. No, not do yet. Okay, I was like worried about it all week. Yeah, because you haven't. We haven't. I'm not. I'm going to cover that on a week from today, Friday, okay. next week. Yeah, because you have to understand what a mole is and how many grams are in a mole, molar masses, and all that stuff. Okay. Do that lab. So we're still on just having taken the data. And yep. Stuff. Exactly. Exactly. So just. Do I have a due date on it? Yeah, March 23, which was last week. Oh, okay. I'm going to change that right now. <laughs> yeah, it's three pages. Mm -hmm. Because cobalt three is a plus three. Bromide is a minus one. That's why we need three of them. Oh, yep, exactly. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. I know. That's that's right. That's all, like... I know. So, so we haven't covered any of this. Okay. And what you're doing is you're predicting over here and then you well then you know so the cl goes to the na the h goes to the co3 and what's the charge in the co3 so that means you have to have two hydrogens and <laughs> so, so did you get my if the, i'm the one who sent an email about the, uh, where to submit the the correction for the test last test because i didn't know what to i, I submitted on the SMS. oh no i haven't done that yet I recently get it. Uh, I recent the the two PDFs for the, mm -hmm. the PDF for the oh, okay. test. Yeah. So let me know if you get it because I submitted it on time and then you said we do it again. I did it so hopefully... Yeah, I wasn't gonna um I, if it's confusing what to do, I usually don't ding you for being late. I don't worry about that. So I'm trying I try to be if I was in your shoes. <laughs> How would I want to be treated? <laughs> Let me do one thing here. Uh, I need to stop the recording.